So, what do we got here? Well, we have a bunch of fires going on. They're saying are wildfires. But uh, I'm sure a percentage of these are started by arson. Uh, will we ever know? I don't know. Probably not. Um, I haven't heard about an investigation into arson and a wildfire in a long time. It's been many, many years. Anyway, so this is what they're saying. Check this out. Like fire continues to rage out of control. Now at more than 200,000 acres, it's the largest in the U.S., burning an area the size of New York City. From space, you can see how much smoke is pouring out, not just from the bootleg fire, but also several others, leaving much of the West blanketed by smoke. Yeah, so this is, yeah, our air quality has been terrible uh, the last week and uh, the past month on and off from time to time, depending on where fires are located and where the wind is going. Typically, the wind, obviously, with the jet stream is blowing to the east of Arizona. Um, but they're shown here in this briefing fires going on in like, um, I don't know, what did they say, seven or nine different states or something. Let me go back and check that. You guys can take a look. Um, let's see here. Here we go. Good evening and thank you. Caused by a devastating drought. Crews wearing heavy protective clothing destroyed and lives shattered. There's growing concern the fires will soon chew through power lines, putting the electric grid at risk. Okay, so you're going to notice that the news is going to drop these little seeds on you and talk about the power grid or maybe even say something as simple as what she said. Yes, does fire affect power lines? Sure, yes, sure it does, depending on the size of the fire, of course. But what I'm saying is they're kind of planting seeds in our mind to get us ready for the power grid going down, some sort of internet hack. Uh, if you guys don't know what poly, uh, Cyber Polygon is, I'm going to be doing a video about it tomorrow. It's basically a global exercise that the World Economic Forum did with a whole bunch of countries in cooperation of governments to plan for the possibility of a uh, power down scenario, an internet hack, or the financial system going bust. So look up worldeconomicforum.org. Um, Klaus Schwab is the billionaire um, CEO founder of World Economic Forum, which has the cooperation of 180 countries. Um, and not only does he have the cooperation of 180 countries, that means obviously he has the cooperation of 180 leaders. You hear what I'm saying, people? This guy's connected with, with almost 200 presidents from around the world. It's kings, queens, presidents, I, <laughs> this is no joke, but what I'm saying is I'm going to be doing a video about that tomorrow and I'll be talking more about it. But uh, back to these fires over here. Check this out. CBS's Lilia Luciano is going to lead off our coverage tonight. For okay, so right here is where they mention how many states and how many fires. While enduring record-breaking temperatures from yet another stifling heat wave. From Arizona to Alaska, California to Colorado, nearly 70 fires are now raging across 12 states, putting a strain on the plains and... Putting a strains on the plains. They always got their riders are so corny. So, 70 fires in 12 states. Okay. So you guys are getting a picture here, okay? So yeah, the air quality in Arizona sucks right now. It's been terrible, yeah. Um, not not exactly uh, ideal for hanging out and barbecuing outside and, you know, poolside, chilling. Anyway, long story short, peeps, uh, there's a lot happening right now. And um, uh, part of this feels like Agenda 21. Like um, a lot of this might be intentional, uh, I know how that sounds. Um, I'm not saying all of them are. What I'm saying is a percentage of them, obviously we're in a heat wave. Obviously the sun is in a, a solar cycle right now where it's acting up. We've been in a drought on the West Coast. I've lived here in Phoenix, Arizona 20 years. Obviously there's a huge drought. But it seems like a percentage of these fires were started by arson, and some of them might be wild or not. But... <laughs> You know, I can go to the Paradise Fire and the Malibu Fire and Santa Rosa Fires, and I can show you evidence where uh, fires that are airborne, air, natural wildfires only are supposed to be able to burn between 700 degrees and 1,000 degrees, okay? I can show you temperatures that were up to 3,000 degrees. I can show proof of it that I have archived on my YouTube channel. Not only that, 
but temperatures that were 1,200 to 2,000 degrees at times. Though there was only one time where I can show proof of 3,000 degrees, but and that was crazy. It was a fire tornado, and mainstream covered that. It was everywhere. Some of you may have remember that. It was in California. Anyway, long story short, when you see the cars, for example, aluminum, aluminum, aluminum takes 1,200 degrees or more to melt. Glass takes over 2,000 degrees to melt it. Okay, so what I'm saying is I'm, I'm not saying, you know, that I'm showing a proof of that this year. I'm saying from those California fires from the last few years, there were times where I could show pictures that defy logic of fires that were burning hotter than 700 degrees to 1000 degrees. All right. Natural air, you know, wildfire, air fire, they call it or whatever. Yeah. 700 degrees. I mean, obviously that's hot. But when you see something that's burning much hotter than that, then it defies physics. So you can't, you can't make that up. It's not something that you can just like be like, oh, yeah, well, maybe uh, because the winds picked up and because uh, it was just a hotter day that day and so the fire was hotter. No, 700 to 1,000 degrees, it doesn't jump from that. It's, it's kind of like the basic physics. Somebody says, well, how many, how many degrees does it take to melt steel? Steel, it takes like 2,500 degrees to 3,000 degrees to melt steel, okay? You can't happen less than that. It's like there's certain physics where it shows that there could be the possibility of direct energy weapons being used. If it is, somebody says to me, is it our government? Is it another government? Do you think China's doing this to us and they're trying to burn up the West Coast? And then maybe it's a combination of them using it to their advantage while everything's going on. And it's also, you know, during the wildfire season. So it's being camouflaged and masked to appear to be as such. It sounds crazy. When you go down the rabbit hole, you can imagine many possibilities and scenarios. So I don't want to theorize too much, but I'm also trying to play the devil's advocate to the extent where I'm trying to give you the information and stimulate your mind and make you think about the possibilities of what could be contributors to the West Coast fires. Obviously, the drought is number one. That's number one. Number two is... Are some of these wildfires by somebody just throwing a cigarette butt out the window on the highway and then it catches fire? Is it a lightning strike? A lot of times they say, oh, it's because of a lightning strike. Sure, that's absolutely realistic and possible to, to imagine. But what I'm saying is let's not get lost in that fog of, oh, it's just wildfires every year. No, there's there have been investigations through the years that showed that there were um, reserve firefighters in remote uh, towns in, in, in the hillside and the mountains, you know, towns that only work in the summer. And there was uh, an investigation uh, a couple decades ago. That was like one of the last ones I heard about somebody that was arrested for arson. And here it was a part time firefighter who was reserved just during the fire season in the summer. Um, but we haven't heard anything about any investigations. They're just saying, oh, they're all wildfires. You know, okay, 100% of them, really? Nobody maliciously started some of these to uh, clear out space and clear out acreage. The reason I'm saying this is because the U.S. government and, uh, and the state government and the feds also in, in California with the Paradise Fire to the Malibu fires from five years ago, and Santa Rosa fires, they were not allowing people to rebuild in certain cities, in certain sections of the city, where they were just like, oh, take this payout, you know, oh, your house was worth how much money? Okay, whatever. Well, guess what? We're, you know, FEMA, what was the FEMA? Account? There was like 220,000, 200, and I can't remember what it was. But the point is, is in certain counties, they were not allowing people to rebuild their house. They were like, this is a fire zone, a fire hazard zone, you know, wildfire, whatever the, the terminology was. And the long story of it short is, is that part of, I think, Agenda 21 in clearing property and sustainable development is, is the government reclaiming land where they say, okay, well now this property is unfit for people to live here because it's a fire hazard zone, so you cannot rebuild your house here. Now yet you're still paying a mortgage on it, and it was kind of like take it or leave it, take the payout or don't. So I will be doing a video about that, about the Paradise, Santa Rosa, and Malibu fires from a few years ago in California. 
not only that, but I will be doing a video about Cyber Polygon, which is the World Economic Forum's um, global exercise of an internet or power, ground, power grid down scenario. So there's so much to talk about and cover. Those will be a, a couple of the key elements that I'll be talking about um, this week. So stay tuned for more, and uh, I'll check you on the next video.